college students, because you're going to be demonstrating what you've learned about managing and optimizing the value of content in our course by producing two reports, I've provided you with some samples and this video which talks you through those. I'm going to cover three topics in this particular video lecture. First, I'll start by presenting the range of deliverables that are or can be created in industry during a content strategy development project. Second, I'll briefly distinguish between the different course deliverables that you'll be creating. And I'll spend the bulk of my time at the end discussing three samples. We're going to start with the kind of deliverables produced by content strategy professionals. In Enterprise Content Strategy, Kevin Nichols provides a figure on page 25 that lists the range of deliverables that can be associated with a content strategy development project. He presents them by the parts of the overall development process used at his former employer, Sapient Nitro. I've included many, but not all of his examples here. You'll see content assessment, content inventory, content audit, and competitive assessment here under Discover. As the process continues and define, Nichols lists deliverables like content requirements, voice and tone recommendations, content strategy roadmaps. Under design, he lists, for example, content lifecycle recommendations and metadata strategy. Finally, under implement, he lists production deliverables like CMS authoring guides. While it's important that you understand the wide range of possible deliverables, I have simplified things considerably for our eight-week course, in part by limiting your content strategy activities. I've also separated your course deliverables into, into three primary assignments. Let me help you understand the distinctions among these three right now. I want to start with this quote from The Content Advantage, written by Colleen Jones, who argues that content strategy is more like poker than chess, because poker players must strategize with only partial information. I included this in my Module 3 lecture because it's critical for you to understand that even in industry, professionals have to make decisions about content without all of the information they wish they had. It's true for professionals who must make judgments based on what they have rather than what they wish they had. Of course, it's also true for students who are completing content strategy deliverables for actual clients instead of for an instructor. All professionals are expected to make decisions with less than perfect information. The most succinct way I can put the difference is this. The team assessment focuses on collecting and auditing existing content. The individual report builds on your team assessment by focusing on strategic directions for the future. Let me tie this to my Module 3 lecture. As a member of a team, you'll focus on assessing existing content. It requires planning, of course, and also some defining of the gap that exists between the current state of your client's content and their desired state. Your team submits the draft version of two deliverables, a spreadsheet and a brief report at the end of Module 4, and then the final versions of those at the end of Module 5. As an individual, you'll build on the work done by your team and focus on creating a more strategic content roadmap report that explains how your client manages content in the future. That report is due at the end of the course. Both projects have the same four learning objectives. The first objective is for you to focus on content as a business asset and present content strategy development as a means of increasing business value. Much of the material in Modules 1 and 2 teaches you how to think about content in that way. The second objective is for you to gain experience in gathering and organizing both descriptive and evaluative data about content. You'll be doing this through 
interactions with your client, reviews of existing artifacts, use of tools, etc. Module 3 teaches you about these activities. The third objective is for you to gain experience in analyzing content to achieve strategic insights. Module 3 also teaches you about analyzing content performance, but this is something that will continue throughout the remaining modules of the course. We'll investigate some typical areas for improving content operations. Most of the true strategic work you do will be during the last modules for your individual report. Finally, the fourth objective is for you to learn project management tools and techniques. Module 2 teaches you about these, but you'll be expected to practice them throughout the course. In order to help you understand a little more about the major team and individual assignments, I'm going to go through some samples now. Warning! These samples are not perfect models of the work you'll be submitting. I'll say more about strengths, weaknesses as a model for your own work as I discuss them on the next few slides. You may want to download copies of them from Canvas as you follow along with me. Please note I've altered the samples to comply with the non-disclosure agreement or NDA I signed with the client. I'll have more guidance for you on how to do this later in the course. Sample A was completed by a three-person team of students in TECM 5200. They submitted this document as a Word file for one of the team content assessment deliverables. I'll discuss the other deliverable, their spreadsheet, as sample B. Let's look at the table of contents for sample A to get a feel for the types of information it included. An executive summary, a very important technical report writing tool. If you don't know about executive summaries, I encourage you to learn about them. There's an introduction, a method section, and then the results section, which is the bulk of the report and includes three big subparts, a part about strengths, a part about concerns, and a part about hero and competitor analysis. Then the final part is a discussion. One of the first evaluative comments I'll make about this particular sample is that the use of a table of contents makes sense with a lengthy document. However, one of Client B's comments on this sample was that much of the information in the report wasn't needed. The spreadsheet is the primary deliverable of interest to the client. So let's look at the sample I've labeled B. It was completed by the same team who created sample A. They submitted this spreadsheet as an Excel file for the second team content assessment deliverable. Let's look at the types of information it contained. The first few columns include descriptive or inventory information, like content page title. For this project, all content that was assessed was a web page. Could be different for other projects. There's a column that's headed URL so that no one is confused about which page is being assessed. There's a column for team member, so one team member took responsibility for assessing each piece of content. There's a column for content type. In this case, the team used information, guide, and reference as a way of classifying the types of content. If you've had the digital literacies class and you know a little bit about DITA, you know that this could have been labeled concept instead of information, task instead of guide, and reference. Either way, as long as it works for your client, that's what matters. At this point, the columns change to evaluative information, like writing for the web, which includes standards like plain language, headings, grammar. Note that this team evaluated those as low, average, or high. They used a color coding to make it easy for the client to see how each content asset rated on those standards. Then we have some more descriptive info about broken links and an evaluative uh, discussion of how this worked and maybe what should be done. There's a column for other comments. 
There's also a column on whether that particular asset adhered to the company's style and brand voice guidelines. And then the final column for additional feedback. One of the things I would note here is it would be easier for the client to get the guidance um, for each asset if the adherence to style and voice guides was rated in the same way as plain language or headings or grammar. Please note, this is the primary, but only the first tab of the spreadsheet. There's a tab for heroes, and there's a tab for competitors. One final note on this sample, it does include much valuable information. It's not everything that could be there. For example, there are no ID numbers connecting the spreadsheet to the report. I'll say more about that in a second. There's also no evaluation of accessibility. That might be essential in a different project for a different client. This team made choices based on discussions with their client about their goals, the contents audience, et cetera, et cetera. Now, back to the report that was delivered along with the spreadsheet we just looked at in sample B. The team did a great job using headings to help their client readers skim through the summary of results. One thing you'll note in my comments when you look at the report PDF in Canvas is that the lack of ID number for content assets made it more difficult for the client to connect specifics in the spreadsheet with the content in the summary of the report. One of the effective aspects of this assessment are the specific examples like screenshots that made it easy for the client to understand the feedback provided by the content audit team. You'll see many specific examples from the hero and competitor analysis in this sample as well. Now, let's consider the sample labeled C. It was completed by an individual student and was directed toward me as their instructor for the strategic content roadmap report. The client did not see it. Sample C included the types of information shown in the headings displayed on this slide. There was an introduction, a SWOT analysis, a big section on strategic directions and tactic, then a conclusion and references. On this slide, I'm showing an image of page six which is one of the pages on which the student described their strategic roadmap for the client going forward. This student identified three strategic directions, including customer focus shown on this page, and then also provided a detailed list of tactics for implementing um, their strategy to raise their client's level of content operations maturity. That should be enough to help you begin thinking about content strategy deliverables. Let me end with a summary of the five most important points I want to make about the samples I've provided for you as you create your own deliverables in our course. First, none is perfect. They're not a substitute for the assignment instructions that I've given you on Canvas. In fact, some were not directed at clients or content owners. Samples A and B include much of the required information for the team content assessment. Sample C includes much of the required information for the individual strategic content roadmap report. And finally, your individual report is a continuation of what you've done as a team member. It's my hope that at least one deliverable you create in the course will provide you with an artifact you'll be proud to display in your professional portfolio. However, I've created a separate video to help you think about how to honor the NDA you signed with the client when you share deliverables outside our course. Good luck.